made so that was 2664 all right guys we made it to 50 okay guys i'm gonna try to explain every move as we go through these exercises let's try to get 50 in and here we have black pieces to move it would always tell you whose turn it is up here and of course try to do it on your own first i'm going to be leaving chapters the way you can skip if you don't want to hear me talk right so the first ones are pretty easy so i realize there is a bishop cutting off the king so simple back rank checkmate and many of my students always complain why puzzle rush the first ones are just wasting time well always if we look at your games we're going to see these patterns that you miss over and over and over so it's good to brush up on them that way we don't get rusty when it comes to the simple ones now this one i look at checks and this happens to be checkmate pawn is cutting, cutting off the king king is controlling g6 and knight f6 also controls g8 so simple checkmate in one move this one we know this pattern knight and queen that's mate then here i'm also looking at my queen trying to get to h7 the h file being open we've talked about this so many times so immediately i'm thinking what if my knight were not here well in this case i can get my knight out by attacking something like the free bishop or i could do it with check even more forcing and then the queen goes and delivers checkmate here same thing knight and queen i could go check it's not checkmate but if i look further one more move this is going to be checkmate. So check and checkmate. <laughs> this next one, very interesting already, is going to ask us to or require us to calculate a little bit more. Of course, most of you are going to go one move at a time, check, and then see what happens. But I always tell you, if you want to get the most out of it, you should be trying to do everything in your head. Calculate. So here, this is check, but it's not checkmate because the knight could get in the way. So we got to realize that we have bishop h7 thanks to this knight the other knight cannot capture because there is a pin so after i take they block check only move is to move to the side and then that is checkmate so we have to calculate if we do it properly one two and three when we take the knight right this one pretty straightforward this is the first check that comes to mind bishop and queen working together so this is just pattern recognition this one same thing first check that comes to mind and the only thing they could do is block but then our pawn is going to collect on g3 so check and when we take not only do we continue to threaten mate but we are also pinning the pawn on the rook so we ha we get to choose right and then here of course discover check and then we could even collect afterwards so check and next one this one same thing checks i'm looking at checks now a lot of my students when they get this kind of exercise first pattern that comes to mind is knight f7 and that's a pretty nice fork so this is something that they're familiar with now we have to of course consider checks as well when the king goes up then we finally have bishop g5 and that is checkmate now another way to go about it is if you look at this move first you gotta realize queen is seven check and then they save the rook not only that one thing that i like to do quickly before i work on the exercise is to see if i'm winning if i'm losing when it comes to material in this case i don't have a queen so i need to go for significant gains of material or checkmate so check and then checkmate and we have talked about the pearl bishops so here you have it next one same thing i'm looking at my checks this is a capture but we have talked about how we look at the checks first they're more forcing and now if let me do it in my head first if i go check they could only block or move out the way if they block then we take this rook if instead queen h3 they move well we take because we, the rook is on g8 so check and then we take perfect so that's already 12 in this next one i'm looking at my checks there are only two checks but of course they don't make any sense right now captures well i could capture these and it has to do about these guys either taking on g5 or taking on e3 now i'm thinking if i take on g5 they take my knight no big deal i could take after but they take me again so it most it's mostly about eliminating the defender of the knight with a tempo 
and then I collect on g5. So we take hitting the queen, and then thank you for the free knight. Now this one, two things come to mind right away. Number one, this king is here a little bit trapped, and I look at my checks, right? So the rook is cutting it off, this pawn and king, they are just cutting it off completely. So there mo must be checkmate. Also, the fact that I have one rook, they have a queen, yeah, this has to be checkmate or maybe something to win the queen. But in this case, simple checkmate in one. And next one is the same pattern, guys. Bishop and queen. So here I'm paying attention to my queen so close by to the king and then what pieces might be involved as a helper. We have both bishops again. And the only thing blocking the bishop from helping is my own knight. We had one like this before. And here you see the importance of doing lots and lots of tactics. Those patterns are just going to stick, right? So this one, I look for things I could threaten with a knight, but checks are way more forcing. Check, whatever they do after, the bishop was going to help me out. Now this one, same thing, checks, captures. This is a check and also a capture. Only move, and then if I could hit him through the dark squares. Of course, first move that comes to mind is before, but it's not safe. So I need to go to a3. So bishop g6 check, followed by queen a3. So check, and then knight blocks is the only move. So of course we take it with the queen, checkmate. Now next one, this is, okay, this one is pretty simple. This is the only check I see, it's also a capture. And we have to see one move further, which is after they take, we need to update that image in our head. The king is going to be here, rook is on c1, that means knight could go ahead with a fork. So pretty forcing, and I trust you guys can finish this, convert this end game afterwards. So there we go, this one, white pieces to move, and same thing, king here, a little bit trapped, this pawns, the king, we just need to hit him, and then checkmate. Now this one, I'm realizing knight queen, not safe because the bishop is there, but I'm thinking, hey, I have another pawn. So let me look at my forcing moves. This, of course not, it's not even check. I need to look at queen takes or pawn takes. Now, I don't wanna risk the queen. Let me take a look at this one, check. If the king goes here, we promote, and that's checkmate. If after pawn takes, king moves, now, anyone would think of taking the bishop, maybe that works. Take the bishop, and then queen d7, and then rook b1. No, 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 no. I think I like pawn takes if they move, knight f7, and then I promote. That has to be more accurate. Lastly, if pawn takes, what else could they do? This one we looked at it, we looked at it. If bishop takes, this is checkmate in one move. So, that's it. Take. And that's it. They don't even want you to to, find, to tell to say anything. Now this one, same old back rank checkmate, but we need to find the right square to land in. If I go to e1, they capture me. If I go to d1, they capture me. So there's a defender that is overloaded, meaning they're defending two pieces at the same time. So if I go queen b1 first, they have to take me, and then d1 all of a sudden becomes available. So check, and then d1. Okay, we made it to, well, let's make it to, yeah, number 20. And now after number 22, they increase a little bit more. Then 37 is another key, key number. Now this one, checkmate, we have a battery, but they have two defenders. So we liquidate, eliminate one of the defenders of the back rank. Now we go to the simple back rank checkmate. Now this one is why to move, of course, it has to do with a discovered check. The thing is, where do we put the knight? Now this one seems pretty promising. If they block, we simply take, and that's just gonna be checkmate on the next move. If they just move out the way, we just deliver mate anyways. So knight g6, and then check and mate. All right, this one, Comes to mind right away, but after the king goes to h1, I don't see the follow-up. And they are ready to get me in trouble. So I'm thinking, do we have any other checks? Well, I could go here. King goes to the to the right. 
that's going to be made. If king goes to h1, well, this is also checkmate. So check and mate. Now, guys, notice how queen and knight work, they work so well together because the queen they moves through files, diagonals, knight moves completely different. So they're a good combination to have. Now, here I'm thinking bishop is seven, but the knight takes. So what if I eliminate the defender? So if bishop d5, they take me back. Well, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> they, then I just collect on e7. But what if I take, they take me here. Then this is, we had a lesson on this desperado. We take again. And if they take me back here, I collect the free bishop. If instead they collect the rook, I collect this rook. And if they take me back, then I take back. Now, try to do these things in your head, guys. But anyways, we just got a knight, we got a bishop, we got a rook. And of course, we're going to get the other bishop that ends over here. So that's three minor pieces and a rook. They got our bishop, and they got our other bishop here, right? So we take, 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 and that's it. Okay, this one. Take your time, it's uh, black pieces to move. And the same thing, I'm looking at my checks. One, two, and three. And of course, there is an overloaded piece right here. And guys, that's a pretty good exercise. If you're getting started, if you're having trouble with these exercises, first thing you could do is try to count the material. You could also try to look at all of the possible checks. How many checks do you have? And that's good practice to train your brain. Now here, I'm thinking rook g1, they have only two options, so I'm liking that. If they take with the queen, then I collect on f3, only move is to block, and we simply collect with checkmate. If rook takes rook, king takes, then I go queen c1, and the only move is to simply block with the with the queen, and my bishop is going to help me collect, in, and that's going to be checkmate. So check, second move, and then third move, checkmate. All right, this one, pretty simple. If you didn't see it instantly, it's just a matter of pattern recognition. King is sort of smothered by its own pieces and our knight is going to deliver checkmate. Now, there's a book that I recommended, guys. I always put it in the description that I remember this pattern from that specific book, believe it or not. So anyways, this one checks. This one seems safer, so let me look into that one first. They have to go down and then I go check again. When the king goes up, this is checkmate with the other rook. So check, check, and checkmate. This one, same combination. Look at this, queen and knight. How can they work together? Either by going here or by going here. So I'm going to start with queen c3 because it doesn't allow the king to leave. If I go queen b2, then they could simply go to d3. So maybe this doesn't work, but I look into it first, check. If it goes, if they go here, then queen b2 mate. Check. If they go here, only other check is knight b2 check. They have to go here. This is check. King has to go down. And then this is finally checkmate. Guys, now we have to calculate to visualize a little bit more. But also, we could use the stepping stone method that we've, we've talked about in the past. So, check. Check, that's two moves, three and four. Of course, calculation is important, but if you've seen this pattern before, it's way easier to visualize. So mate, now number 29, we look at checks two. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. Now, when we talked about candidate moves and resulting moves and all of that, we talked about how we should look at the candidate moves and get a feeling for them first. Before we start calculating, see, okay, which one is more forcing, right? Knight c4, knight d1, queen g5, queen c1. Well, let me start with the queen moves. This one, it gives them options. They could take, they could block, they could, yeah, they could take, they could block, right? So that's like three options right there. Queen c1 doesn't seem to leave them many, many, uh, many options. So after queen c1, I actually realize that is checkmate. King cannot move over here, king cannot go up, and the queen is controlling all of these diagonal. So queen c1 happens to be checkmate. There we go. Next one, we're in charge of the white pieces. 
I see my pawn is pretty dangerous down here, but I don't see many more pieces. Bishop is looking that way, but again, it's not like I have the queen clear, uh, close by or anything like that. So I don't think it's about checkmating the king. So what could this be about? Okay, I just realized. Now, another good exercise here to find the answer is to get a feeling for the position. Am I up material? Am I down even? And I just realized it's the same. So if I just get a free knight or a couple pawns, that's significant material. So I'm thinking I could take and then finally collect free pawn or I could get a free knight. If they take me, I take back and then these bishops are just too much. Now, is that the answer? Because after I take, they could just go up here and then bishop c2. So I have my two bishops again. They could only block and I take it or they could block with this knight. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look as promising. See, so this one we have to think. This is number 29. What am I missing here? Okay, th let me look into this one first because it looks very promising. Take, take. Only thing that is bothering me is what if they go over here. At that point, this is what we talked about, stepping stone, right? So we look into two moves. And guys, we should be able to visualize two moves into it. So if we visualize this far, then we look at we do the same thing from that possession, right? We treat it as a brand new possession. So we look at the checks, captures. So with my bishops controlling all of these, king being on h7, what checks do I have with captures and so on? So rook takes, one takes, bishop takes, king h7. Now, very important here, notice that I calculated for a little bit after King h7, bishop c2, knight g6. I don't see anything concrete, so that's me exploring that candidate move. Now, I want to look at the other candidate moves. If I don't see anything promising, only then I come back to it. So this is a good way to save energy and time when you're calculating. Now, good thing about this position is that there are not many other attractive candidate moves, right? Like, what else are you going to do? Take this doesn't really offer anything. So of course I go back to it and only now that nothing else works, I'm going to spend more time on it. So here guys, looking at it, it has to be same thing, king h7, bishop c2, knight g6, and then we gotta update this image in our head. The pawn already moved, so we go rook e1, hitting the bishop, so it comes with a tempo. And if the bishop moves or if it's defended, then we bring our rook to g6, to put more pressure. Now, I'm thinking, what if they go rook g8? Well, I think I have bishop g7, right? So that has to be it. And let's let's take a look. But you see that here we have to calculate a little bit more. So one, two, well, that's it. You see, they didn't even make us go through the whole thing, but if you wanna get the most out of this puzzle rush, you cannot just go, oh, let me do a move and see what happens. You have to push yourself to calculate. And guys, that's the difference between one level and the other. How accurately, how fast, how much you can calculate um, from a certain position, right? Okay, this one, not many pieces. And first move that comes to mind is check. Only move is to go over here, but what to do next? Now, this one, check. Anywhere the king goes, we got fork and we collect the rook. But that cannot be it. And it cannot be it because after it's just going to be a draw. So, okay, okay, check. <laughs> if they go here, that's a fork. If after check they go over here, it's rook a3 skewer. So you see simple tactics and we could easily miss this anytime. If you're in time pressure, yes, of course we could miss this. So check, check, and then we collect. So here it's a uh, black to move, my checks. Oh, this is also check and checkmate. <laughs> so there we go. Then number 33. In this one, I see this pattern first, but it doesn't work and the king could run away. Okay, how about this check? This is similar. This queen c1, we've seen it before. Only move. Oh, there's no move. This is checkmate. Perfect. And notice how the bishop controls the light square diagonal. Queen controls the dark square diagonal. And this, this comes back to a positional principle that we learned on lesson number 91. When you have only one bishop left, typically the queen 
wants to be on that other diagonal or controlling those other squares. So that's checkmate. This one, I'm looking at a capture. Let me just calculate a little bit more. Material is even. So what could this be about? Okay, I just realized. When I take pawn takes, knight b3 or b3 becomes available. So it comes with a tempo. They have to move the rook and then another skewer. So guys, the same simple patterns, but a few moves down the road. So we have to visualize. Take, knight b3. In this case, they did not want to let us uh, do that. So we captured the rook. Number 35, this is why to move. Same thing, white checks do I have? This is a powerful check, but I'm also hitting the rooks, right? So that's, it came after. So it has to be getting the rook. Take, take, king goes up, this is mate. If I take, what else could I do? Promote? Well, we take with check and then mate. And finally, if we take, they could get our queen. If we take back, careful, if we take back, they promote with check. Okay, so that's why, I look, we do, I think it's going to be check. We continue to control this, we get away from this, and only then we take. So this is what you're going to start seeing from now on. If you're getting stuck at 30-something, it's because you guys have to be paying attention to the little details. Change the move order or simply pay more attention to your opponent's threats. A little bit of prophylaxis, right? So check, and that's it. All right, so black to move. Look at this king, a little bit weird right here. If we could just put it in check, right? Okay, I just realized. So none of this is safe. So the same thing, change the move order, look at your candidate moves. I think it's check, force to take, queen comes in safely, and if the king goes over here, do I have, oh, then the other rook, and that's checkmate, perfect. So check, check, and mate. There we go, this one, pretty straightforward pattern right away. G3, we take it, we are trapping that rook, and if they take us, we've seen this pattern before as well. We get a rook because the pawn is pinned. So check, take, and then, of course, we got to consider this, but it doesn't lead to anything promising. Queen itself is not going to do checkmate, so we get the rook, and we get to number 37. Guys, in my experience doing this with my students, from number 37 on, it's a little bit, a little bit tougher, right? We still got 13 more to go. And here it is, black pieces to move. Now I'm realizing, cutting off the king, cutting off the king, I just need the knight to come over. That would be check, and I control f4. However, no one is controlling h4. So I need to visualize. Knight h5, only move, and then bishop f6 is the final checkmate. Right? So um, knight h5, and then checkmate. Two move checkmate, but you need to calculate. This one... Pretty straightforward. We need to move the knight out the way. Many people will go for, oh, let me go after the queen. No, we have knight f3. King has to move here, only move. And these double checks are so, so, so powerful. There are two pieces attacking the king. They're forced to move the king. Only move to go to d1. And then we got checkmate on e1. So check. And that's mate. This one, it's white to move. Look at the king by itself right here. Our bishop is controlling over here, but so are the pawns. Queen is far away. So what could this be about? I'm thinking already queen f7, hitting all of these. And a very important detail in these exercises is my king cannot be checked easily. So that means I could do a move that is not so forcing. They don't have a check on the next move. So I'm thinking queen f7, hitting the bishop. Bishop moves or they protect it. Then I take... King goes to g5, and then this is checkmate. So there we go. They said, you're not going to checkmate me today. Come back tomorrow. Fine. Give me the bishop. I'm fine with that. Okay, this one, if I don't take, they take me. So this is pretty straightforward. But still, if I want to do this right, I'm going to do it in my head. So queen takes queen, pawn takes back, and I get myself a passed pawn that it's outside, or actually that the king is outside of its square, is it? Yeah, no, well, actually, not that one, but this one. So I'm thinking, take, take, d4, king g1, and when I play c3, there's no way the, the white king is going to get in the square after. So we take c3, 
And now when I take once more, this is the square of the pawn. We talked about it already. And we got to number 41. So nine more to go. Quickly, this is a simple checkmate in a few moves. Check, check, and mate. So check, there we go. This one, check, check. No, 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 wait, let me see. Check. This would be nice checkmate, but the bishop is in here. So check, check. No, 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 no. Mm -mm -mm. Check. And then check, checkmate. There we go. So you see, we look at the options. This is one check, very attractive, but this one actually does the job. And this one, I let go of it because even, no, no, this, I didn't realize the queen could take me, but I realized that eventually the king is just going to go away. So this one is more forcing, check, and then mate. Okay, so white pieces to move, and let me see. Okay, this is pawn about to promote. They have a rook. Okay, okay, so I'm thinking some kind of interference. So if I go here, they're going to go right here. It would be nice to have this, right? But no, that doesn't make any sense. What am I missing? Any ideas with this? They don't work. So if I go c7, rook c1. Okay, maybe the move is bishop b2, and then we promote. No, because they always have this move. I mean, of course, we can always go c7, they go after the pawn, and then we just defend it, but it cannot be it. Mm, okay, 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 okay. Let me go back. Bishop, I, I just realized, I was thinking, if I go here, well, they don't really have... What did I calculate? Well, forget about that. What I, I just realized, if I go bishop c3, and again, I was looking at this because I've seen this pattern where you create an obstruction, but bishop c3, if they go here, I have a fork, so they don't have that move. And if bishop c3, they go, let's say here, we are gone because then the pawn doesn't let the rook get to d8. If I go bishop c3, this is not an option, so they cannot enter. This move, not an option because c7, they cannot get to the back rank. So bishop c3, they, this one doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work because of this, remember? Doesn't work, so that leaves them with rook b1 and the same thing, c7. They just cannot go down here. All right, intuition was correct. We go. Oh, what did I miss? Okay, we'll go back to it. Now, seven more to get to 50. Come on, let's do it. White pieces to move. Now here, important, by number 43, we start to get tired, so we gotta take that into consideration. If you're playing a game, you gotta push through it, guys. Do some, uh, if you need to, stand up, get some water, and make sure that you come back strong. Same thing here. If you need to take a break, take a break. You could have this open the entire day. When you come back to Puzzle Rush, it's gonna take you to the same spot. So keep that in mind. If you feel getting frustrated, leave, come back with a fresh mind, right? Now, why to move? Let's get to 50. These are my checks. King moves. Mm, not nice. This bishop is sort of compromised. Mm, mm, mm. Now I'm thinking bishop e2, but the bishop leaves. So what is that about? Or maybe it's just check and then go over here and collect the pawn. Well, that one looks pretty for pretty promising. Let me see if I find something better, okay? Mmm, okay. <laughs> All right, so now, only now that I visualize this in my head, I realize d1 becomes available. So when the king moves, then I go back to the other idea that if the rook leaves, the bishop is hanging. So I, I mentioned the bishop is compromised. Can I do something about it? This, I of course, eliminated that possibility. But with check, then bishop d1. But again, I didn't realize it until I visualized my rook leaving d1. So bishop d1, 
Now, if I play fast, nothing happens. So I need to get the bishop and we got material. Okay, six more. This is black to move. This is a check. This is a check. And e3, maybe some discovery or some something like that. My queen, what could I do? Well, okay, okay, wait. Mm, e3, no. Is it queen h4, rook h2? Now, let me look at the forcing moves. No, 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 no. Bishop, queen d7, the bishop is there. Okay, so what could this be about queen? Queen h4 is pretty powerful. They don't have any checks on me, so what could they do about it? Because then I'm thinking, I take, take back with the queen. My bishop is going to get activated the moment they get on the on the light square. So what could they do about this? They could do check. I move out the way, if anything, because I want to get this in. So what could they do? Maybe defend? Now there's an idea here that I don't know if it's, it's, if it's the idea, but I'm thinking queen h4, rook f1. I go rook f3. Actually, no, the other rook, rook f3. If they take me, then I go queen f4. And that way, I don't know, then I'm taking, I don't know. That's just an idea, right? So let's keep calculating. Well, you know what? Even better. What if we go queen h4, rook f1, pawn e3, right? So I realize there's a pin over here. I'm hitting the rook. I'm hitting the pawn. And if they just move this rook, well, I think we get the pawn. And again, I don't, I don't well, yeah, we take the pawn. We're getting to g3. This is just going to, whoop, this is just going to be a lot. So, Again, it seems pretty winning for the black pieces, and I don't see anything better. So queen h4, there we go. Okay, rook g1 instead. Then we just take, right? So take, okay, should I take or should I do e3? So take, if they just go back, this is completely winning. Take, if they take me, I take again. Rook g2, check, and then I got rook a1, or I got e3 in. And guys, I don't see anything else. So let's go, let's go for it. So there we go. And yep, we open up the bishop. Is there anything cooler? So still checking, but nope, e3 and thank you. There we go, 45. You can see this is what the 40s are about. You need to calculate more, you need to be more concise. And of course, there are patterns that maybe we're not even familiar with. So this one, white pieces to move, come on. We got a few more. And okay, material is, we're up a piece, but this pawn is dangerous. So I'm thinking, I get this, they push, check, they block. And then, and then, 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 if we take, they take back. And can we get to the pawn? I don't think so. Well, we could do bishop h4. And then we go to f1. So assuming their king moves out the way, we have time to go back and, and block. So guys, I'm not even gonna go too much into it because it has to be that. Otherwise, we stay passive. I see four, so yeah, it has to be that. There we go. We take bishop h4, and then I just go back for the pawn. That's it. All right, I guess I'm on fire. <laughs> nah, just kidding, number 46, we got four more. I keep seeing this one here and it bothers me. But anyways, King and Pawn Endgame, we've talked about this so many times. We have very important lessons on them, but let's see if we if we know how to apply them. So first move that comes to mind or first idea is I always tell my students when it comes to King and Pawn Endgames, mainly it's about a past pawn that is already there or an active king that we use to get past pawns. So in this case, this is an active king. They go over here and I don't see much progress. So... What could this be about? King a4, king b2, b3. So maybe king a4, king b2, b3, take king b4. If they move this way, that, that's what it is. King a3, they have to give me the pawn. So you see, it's the active king 
or can I4, can B2, B3, pawn takes, can B4. If they go this way, I go to C3, can A3, I take the pawn, they push, I go to C4, can A4, D3, B5, D2, B6, I promote with check. So it has to be these guys. There we go. There we go. Okay, this one we take and easy stuff. All right, so this one, black to move, three more to go, come on. Okay, this one is very interesting because they have pretty annoying checks here. So check, if they go here, king f2, check, I go king f1, right? Oh, no, no, but then they have check over here. Okay, let me take my time. So here, let's try to stay focused. This is 47. Again, if you need, if you need to take a break, you take a break. So let me take a look here. Okay, what about just king, uh, uh, king e2? I'm threatening checkmate. If they want to stop, oh no, they cannot stop it. They don't have this anymore. So yeah, that's it, king e2. What, what could they do about it? Mm, okay, if I take, queen comes in with annoying check. So I go in here, same thing. I'm going down to f1. Take, thank you. All right, and then mate. All right, made it to 48, two more. Only two more. Okay, check or check. If I go, oh, maybe both. Check if they go over here and then mate. If they go over here, well, maybe this is even better. Check and then check and then mate, or if they go up, check, and then mate, right? So what's the difference between this move first and this move first? Check, if I go here, oh, okay, okay, queen d4. Okay, so maybe that's the difference, queen g7, no, they move down, rook g8, queen d4, I thought f6 was enough, but queen e2, and they solve all of the problems. So then, not even this. Okay, here I think instead of going to g7, it's the same idea we thought of if they go to f5, right? So rook g8, king h1, queen f4. That has to be the move to control this pawn. If check, well, we could block with the rook on f6. And then I'm threatening to capture, I'm threatening f3. So that has to be it. Um, check. So this is the first move that comes to mind but I need to be objective. What could my opponent do? It's not only about our moves, but what could our opponent do? So queen f4, there we go. Number 49, if we get this one, we're good to go for today. I like this idea, it came to mind right away. They move out, check. Okay, this one was pretty easy actually. So this should be around 2600, unless I'm missing something. And that's made, so that was 2664. All right guys, we made it to 50. 